Hello, dear students. I am Samir Vilankar. I welcome all of you to this fourth video on normalization. In this video, I will be telling you various uses of FD. In the earlier video, previous video, we saw what is functional dependency and we saw many examples of functional dependency. We also saw a very small example on how FDs can help us in normalization. But I told you that's just the beginning. We have to learn four normal forms in the later videos. But now let's come to some more uses of functional dependencies. I'll just try to increase the font. Okay. Now watch out that functional dependencies can be used for various purposes. The first purpose is to derive additional FDs as given here. Now as an example, imagine that we are given a table R which has, which has four attributes A, B, C, D, four columns. And some functional dependencies are defined by the creator of this table. And the functional dependencies are A determines B and CD determines A. Suppose these, these are the functional dependencies defined. Now what we want to know is that are there any additional functional dependencies besides these two? Can we derive any more additional, additional functional dependencies from the given functional dependencies? Now why we are doing this? Why do you need additional functional dependencies will be seen. But Given the FD set, this is known as FD set, this set contains two functional dependencies. Given this FD set, we want to find out can any more additional dependencies can be found out. So that is one of the uses of FDs. The second and the most important use is to find out candidate key of the given table. Now recall that candidate key is a key. It is an attribute or set of attributes which can determine all the keys, all other keys or all other uh, attributes. So as an example, suppose we are given R, the table having four attributes A, B, C, D. And we have been told that A determines B, C, D, suppose. That means given the value of A, we can determine all other attributes of the table, B, C and D. Then such a key, such an attribute is called candidate key of the table. I repeat, an attribute which can determine all other attributes, of course, including itself, including itself, but that's very trivial. Such a key or such an attribute is known as candidate key. Now many times you know it might happen that A, B together these two keys determine C, D. What that means is A, B can determine all other attributes C, D. In that case A, B will be the candidate key. More on this use later. So these are the first two uses. Third use of FD is to identify equivalence of two FD sets. What happens many times you know. Some, uh, some table is given, let's say R again is the table having four attributes A, B, C, D, okay? And one person has defined an FD set on this, say A determines B and B, C determines D, all right? And the other person has defined another FD set, A determines B and let's say C determines B, D. Now we want to know whether these two FD sets are equivalent or not. What I mean is semantically equivalent. The meaning which this FD set gives, is it same as meaning that this FD set gives? Are they equivalent to each other? So that is what is identifying equivalences of two FD sets. This is also a use of FD. And the fourth use is finding minimal FD sets, removing redundant FDs. It might happen that the creator of the table has defined FDs, but 
so many functional dependencies are defined and we find out some of the functional dependencies are really repeated or redundant then we want to reduce the number of functional dependencies by removing unwanted or redundant fds this also will be done it is a use of fd but the basic question is how to do it there has to be some methodology given the fds we are given some fds we want to derive additional fds or we we are given fds we want to know candidate keys then what is the way to do it now there are two methods to do all the above four things now the method one is called method of inference rules straight away i am telling you this method will be difficult and we will not use this method method at all especially in gate exam uh, of course okay in the interviews you can think of using inference rules because you may have some time maybe 5 minutes to answer a question but in gate exam using inference rules to solve these four questions four type of questions is really going to be time taking method 2 is the closure set of attributes which will also help us to solve the above four problems and this method is easy we will be using this method let's see what is inference rules now inference rules are nothing but set of rules on any fds any functional dependencies you watch out that when you see the inference rules here when you see the inference rules some rules are so simple you know like as an example that suppose we are given x determines y i'll rewrite here x determines y that means you know that in two tuples t1 and t2 t1 and t2 if the value of x is same then in those two tuples t1 and t2 value of y should be same correct that is what it means x determines y and suppose this right hand side y y is a subset subset of x okay is a subset of x then such a depend dependency is known as trivial dependency it's a trivial it's a very simple dependency in fact we never handle trivial function dependency it is rubbish to even write it because it is understood it is so trivial it is so easy it is so simple as an example you see somebody has given a determines a come on why do you write this dependency now just check i am rewriting here somebody has said attribute a determines attribute a what that means is in two tuples t1 and t2 if the value of a is same then in those two tuples t1 and t2 value of a should be same but come on we are talking about a itself then it has to be same in those two tuples so you can see that this x determines y here isn't this y subset of x yes a is a subset of a isn't it every set is subset of itself second example of trivial dependency over here is you just check ab determines b i am rewriting here ab determines b now if this is x determines y then isn't this b subset of ab what that means is in two tuples t1 and t2 if the value of a and b together is equal then in those two tuples t1 and t2 value of b has to be equal you don't need any theorem to prove this just imagine these two columns okay a and b just imagine the table and there is one more column c let's not talk about it and imagine value of a and b are a1 b1 a2 b2 again a1 b1 a3 b3 some values are there now you tell me this functional dependency is such senseless it is it has to be true come on no need of writing it because check these two tuples which i am marking in these two tuples value of ab left hand side is a1 b1 correct value of ab the left hand side of this particular dependency is a1 b1 then it says value of b has to be equal a uh, come on it will be equal isn't it b1 b1 so it has to be equal again you see if the right hand side i am marking here the right hand side of the fd is subset of the left hand side 
then no need of writing such fds because they are understood these are trivial the second inference rule that you may use multiple times is transitive transitive rule this is very easy if x determines y and y determines z then x determines z like if a determines b and b determines c then a should determine c this is transitive relation isn't it what about decomposition if x determines y z then x determines y and x determines z so you can actually see that if the left hand side is say a determines c d then instead of writing this fd you can also write a determines c a determines d both this and this are equivalent so you can actually you know you can decompose the right hand side and write two different fds the fourth rule is augmentation the augmentation rule over here says that if x determines y then you can add anything to the left hand side but the same thing can be added to the right hand side and still the fd holds so if x determines y then xz determines yz as an example suppose i say c determines d let's say then ce determines de where cde are attributes of the table so here is an example shown a determines b then surely ac determines bc we have added c on both sides this is augmentation the fifth rule is union now actually if two different fds are given for the same table let's say a determines b for the table and a determines c then you can see that a a on the left hand side is determining b and c on the right hand side then you can do the union of the right hand side provided left hand side is same so you can come up with a determines b c check that union is nothing but opposite of decomposition isn't it a determines b c can be split as a determines b and a determines c but you can also find union of this that means a determines b c both are opposite of each other union and decomposition the sixth and the final rule is composition you see this the composition means that if a determines b and c determines d now here two fds are there two functional dependencies and lhs of the two fds are not same rhs is also not same but given these two fds you can join the left hand side of the two fds and right hand side of the two fds and say ac determines bd you can say this what that means is suppose if we are given let's say b determines c and let's say we are given e determines f where b c e f are the attributes of the table then you can say b e determines c f you can say this but just as a word of caution just see this just be careful what i am saying about this is that imagine somebody has told us a b determined cd this fd is given then you cannot say you cannot say a determines c and b determines d you can't derive these two fds from this given fd you can't do this you will say that okay a determines c and b determines d this is not true but but if somebody has given us a determines c and b determines d okay then you can say a b both together will determine c d i hope you are understanding composition isn't it now these above six rules six rules can be used for solving our four problems that were described at the beginning of the lecture deriving additional fds identifying candidate keys identifying equivalence of two fd sets and removing redundant fds and finding minimal fd sets but using these rules is really difficult instead we will be using another method for solving these four problems which is called closure set of attributes which we will be looking at in the next video thank you very much